Okay, uh, welcome to episode one of the Potato Cast. This episode, we will be discussing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original film, and the new Netflix sequel. Start off with the uh, the new film. Most glaring, most glaring issue with it, the uh, the plot of the movie. So the entire the entire reason the story is taking place is predicated on an impossibility. Um, the film starts with a group of young influencers who buy an abandoned town in hopes of repopulating it, then breathing life back into it. Uh, they walk around and they spot a Confederate flag on one of the buildings, and they attempt to remove it. And then there's this like old lady in the house or whatever, and she's like, "Ah, oh, it's my daddy's flag or whatever, right?" And then they start arguing about like who owns the orphanage because. They're like, oh, we bought the town, you shouldn't be here, but she's like, I still got the deed, so they start arguing, or whatever, right? And then it, like, zooms in on this photo on the wall, and it's like, oh, look, it's an orphanage, or whatever, and then do you see this this really big kid in the background with his face scratched out? And it's implied that it's supposed to be Leatherface. But, and it's like, okay, I understand trying to give it more of a backstory, but the issue is that the photo on the wall clearly says 1975, which doesn't make any sense at all, because this is supposed to be a sequel to the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre film, which takes place in 1973. So, I don't understand, like, how can that work? How can he be an orphan in 75, if this is a sequel to a movie that took place in 73, where he was already an adult? <laughs> like, I don't get that. Um, and then you see, like, this large dude stands on the stairs, right, and the old lady tells him to go back upstairs, and then a little while later, the old lady, like, has a heart attack or something, and they call an ambulance, and then she dies in the ambulance, right? Um, and then Leather, the, the big dude who's on the stairs, cuts, kills everyone, cuts off a dude's face and starts wearing it, so it is supposed to be Leatherface, right? Like, it's, it's, it's him, it's the same one from the first movie, it's him, it just doesn't make any sense, because... He just completely ignored the fact that the movie takes place two years earlier than he was supposed to be a child in this movie, so I don't know. That was kind of stupid. Um, hmm. Yeah, also, uh, Sally is in this movie for some reason, so let's talk about that, why don't we? Uh, Marilyn Burns, who played Sally in the original film and multiple sequels, passed away in 2014. So, they just got some other lady to play the part. Uh, Sally feels like an afterthought in this movie. She doesn't really do anything, and then they just kill her off. Which is insulting, and not how you should honor the legacy of Marilyn Burns, or any of the other people who had a part in the original film. Uh, also, they introduce Sa The introduction of Sally is so stupid, and blatantly misunderstands the entire point and message of the film that it's supposed to be based on. It's just, it's genuinely baffling. They decided to introduce her in a scene in which she is gutting a pig. In the, it, it makes absolutely no sense, considering that the entire point of the first movie was a message about, like, vegetarianism, you know? It's a theme that isn't hard to pick up on when you're watching the movie. With lines such as, people shouldn't eat animals for food, which is literally a line said by Sally in the first movie. And basically the premise being that we find people eating, like, people eating people disturbing and gross, but slaughterhouses are fine, and eating animals is fine. The meat hook scene, and the fact that the movie treats people like we treat cattle and livestock, should be more than enough evidence for anyone actually paying attention to pick up on. So it's incredibly maddening to see them fumble around and throw out the entire point of the film this movie is a sequel to. I like, I don't know how you could mess it up that bad. It's really, it's pretty basic, I think, uh, you know. Doesn't matter if you necessarily agree with that message or not, you have to acknowledge that that message is there and to make a sequel to a movie where you just blatantly spit in the face of that message is kind of stupid, I think. Also, uh, the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre was actually the movie that uh, made uh, Toby Hooper become a vegetarian uh, filming that movie, so yeah, that's kind of interesting. Um, yeah. 
also, uh, yeah, and plus, like, everything that Sally went through in that first movie, it doesn't make any sense for her to, like, do something like that at all. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Also, like, when they, when they call Sally in this movie, she's still in Texas, which doesn't make any sense, because, like, they didn't live in Texas in the, in the original movie. They were just visiting because of the grave robbings. Uh, so it doesn't make any sense. Why would she still be there? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Um, another thing that, that made me mad is they used the iconic camera sound from the original film in a scene in which somebody just opens a grill, which is wrong for a lot of reasons. Uh, it's insulting, blatantly disrespectful, shows a clear lack of caring when it comes to the technical aspects of filmmaking. Just for the fact alone that it's not the sound a grill makes, it's just lazy and distracting, and it doesn't fit in that scene at all, you know? And then there's the fact that, like, this movie is supposed to be made for fans, and obviously anyone who's seen that first movie is going to recognize that, so I don't understand what the point of just slapping it in that scene was. It doesn't make any sense at all. There's also, like, a weird, like, social justice angle to the film that, like, do, but they don't do anything with it? And then it's just pointless. Like, all of the scenes in which it's supposed to... You're supposed to have those moments just feel empty and vague because, like, they don't matter and they don't do anything for the story. Like, there's a scene where, like, the only black main character in the movie just likes, like, a BLM post on Instagram. But it's only there to, like, appeal to young people. The movie doesn't really care about any of this stuff. It's just there because, eh, you know, we gotta make a movie that... People, younger people will understand because it's like trendy or whatever. I don't know. It's pretty stupid. Um, it's trying to appeal to a younger audience, but also it's a sequel to a movie from 1974. So like, I, I don't know. Pick an audience. It's thematically broken because it doesn't know who it wants to appeal to, and that's pretty stupid. Um. <sighs> The beginning of the movie states that nobody ever found or arrested any of the Sawyers, which, like, is illogical and stupid, uh, because Sally and the two truck drivers at the end of the first movie, like, you know, were, they literally saw Leatherface. They were, like, running around with him, man. He cracked him on the head with a wrench. Um, the fact that Nubbins was laid out dead in the street after being run over by a semi-truck, plus Leatherface being injured from dropping the chainsaw on his leg, also the fact that Sally knows where the house is, there were dead bodies all over it, and also the fact that the grave robbings were all over the national news. The idea that the cops just couldn't find them is incredibly stupid and makes no sense at all. Honestly, it's like they didn't even watch the movie. I wouldn't be surprised if... <sighs> I wouldn't be surprised if they just skimmed the Wikipedia article on the movie instead. Uh, Leatherface's chainsaw doesn't behave like a real chainsaw in the sequel, in this new one. Uh, like I said, it's basically just a lightsaber, you know? It just cuts through everything. It touches instantly with little, like, no resistance at all. Uh, it's really dumb. Um, in the first movie, they used an actual, like, a real chainsaw, you know? And that was, like, crazy because there were multiple moments where people, like, they could have very easily died. Like, there were instances where people had chainsaws, like, in the original film, literally real chainsaws, like, inches away from their faces, you know? And, like, I don't get, you know, and you feel it. It feels real because it pretty much was, you know? And so when you see the new one and it's just a CGI lightsaber chainsaw that cuts through everything without even, you know, with, with without just any resistance at all, it's like, okay, that feels really stupid. Um, there's also a scene that I, I genuinely burst out laughing in when I watched it because it was so funny. There's a scene where the main girl is trying to, uh, she's trying to, like, escape from the house or whatever, right? And she's on the stairs, and she, like, jumps over the banister, and then she looks up, and Leatherface is just standing there, and then he throws a hammer at her. He just stands there for a moment and then just throws a hammer at her, and then she, like, flies backwards and breaks through the floor. It was really stupid, and I hated it. It was really funny. Really dumb. Uh, also, uh, in the uh, in the new movie, uh, Sally has a photograph of all her friends, like from the first movie, which, 
like, that's not a thing that you should, like, mess up. I feel like that's pretty simple, right? Like, they've known each other for a while. She'd probably have a lot of photos. But the picture that they chose to give her is the picture that Nubbins took when they picked him up as a hitchhiker at the beginning of the first movie. Which is stupid, because it's a picture that was never given to them, and Nubbins literally blew it up in the back of their van with black powder and a match. That photo is gone. It doesn't exist. So why does she have it? It's stupid. They messed up literally every aspect of this movie, and I hate it. <laughs> um, the acting is fine. It's not horrible, I guess, you know? I mean, they're not great. Just a bunch of young actors trying to get a paycheck in a difficult industry. So the acting isn't why the movie is bad. It's everything else I talked about. The cinematography feels uninteresting and boring. Uh, the only shot they tried to emulate from the original film is the ending shot of Leatherface swinging the chainsaw around in the sunrise. Uh, but in the new film, they don't. it's not framed right, and they haven't built up any atmosphere at all, uh, you know, to, to get it to that point. Um, that scene works well in the original film because it, it's built up an atmosphere and it's almost avant-garde at times. And so having a scene like that, of Leatherface basically dancing with a chainsaw, doesn't feel out of place. It feels like something that they would do. But the new film hasn't built up any of that because it didn't even, like, try. And so just having that in there also feels really hollow and just cheap. Uh, in the original film, uh, Daniel Pearl's cinematography is just one of the aspects that makes it so memorable and great. Um, it's, it's full of incredibly dynamic and iconic shots. We have the, the, sh the, the iconic dolly shot that goes behind her as she's walking towards the house. The scene, again, of Leatherface dancing with a chainsaw in the sunrise. There's, um, there's the scene where uh, Drayton Sawyer is beating nubbins in the in the head with all the headlights behind him in the fog and it's just it every the cinematography without the cinematography that movie would not have been nearly as good as it was you know there's a lot of really great aspects of it but the way that they they decided to film everything the cinematography elevates it so much and without that i don't like there's really just nothing man there's really nothing there uh, so now I want to get into why the original film, we'll talk a little bit about why the original one was so great. Um, so the original movie, the plot is basically that there's been a rash of grave robbings in Texas, and our five main characters, Sally, Pam, Franklin, Jerry, and Kirk, are going to trip to Texas because Sally and Frank, Franklin's grandfather is being buried in the cemetery, right? He's there. They want to go because, hey, you know, he probably could have gotten dug up. We need to know that. Uh, the plot of the movie is tight. It has great setup and payoff. Every scene has a purpose, which is a result of good writing and planning. Uh, the cinematography makes you feel like you're watching a documentary almost. Everything looks grainy and raw, which is mostly from the fact that it was 1974 and cameras kind of sucked back then, but it helps the movie a lot because it makes everything feel real. You don't feel like you're really watching a movie. Um, the new film is way too polished. It's obvious that none of it is real. It doesn't even feel real at all. The characters make terrible decisions throughout the whole thing. And it makes, like, the, the, char the decisions that the characters make in the first movie aren't necessarily the greatest either, but it was like, I don't know, they're just a bunch of hippies in 1974, and it's like not even really their fault, you know, that they died. Um, it's like, I don't know. Uh, characters feel, the, the fear that the characters feel in the original is so visceral because for the most part, it was real. The scene where Leatherface cut Sally's finger with a knife was real, that he just actually cut her finger. Um, there's a scene where, uh, Gunnar Hansen, who played Leatherface, is chasing Sally, and he kind of skids along the ground, and he did that because while they were filming that scene, he actually slipped and fell over with the chainsaw in his hand running, and it almost hit him in the face. Um, Edwin Neal, who played, uh, Nubbins, uh, there was originally a scene where uh, after he got hit by the semi, he was supposed to be laying on the ground, and the, the asphalt was so hot that it started cooking his face, and they didn't even use the shot. But, like, you have to understand that these they went through complete hell to make this movie. And if you're going to make, like, an actual sequel to it, you kind of have to, like, respect that. 
and understand why that movie was so terrifying for, like, a lot of people. Um, yeah, the sequel, like I said before, is way too polished. It has no grit. It lacks the, the, the spirit and the heart the, the first one had. Um, yeah, and that was just, that was a lot. That was why, uh, I didn't, the new one sucked. It was pretty bad. Um, my experience, and it's important to me as well, because the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is my, the, the original ways, is my, like, my favorite horror movie. And it's, it is because my, the first time that I had ever watched this movie, even like a little bit of it, um, I was in probably like fourth grade, I think, and I was at my friend's house, and I had seen a little of it on the TV, and just the little bit that I had seen was the, the end where Leatherface drops the chainsaw on his leg, and that scene terrified me to no end, and I, I, I couldn't get out of my head. And then years later, obviously, I got older and I watched it, like, again, as, you know, not a child. And it's just, it's one, like, everything about it is just so visceral, terrifying. And it's just, it's just, you know, it's a great piece of filmmaking, you know? It's just wonderful, and I love everything about it. So, yeah, uh, that's why the new one sucked. I hope you enjoyed the first episode of The Potato Cast. Uh, yeah, so, uh, I don't know, I'll see you probably again, probably not, who knows, uh, bye.